Welcome back to Passionate About Music Education and today I'm going to talk to you about communication and I want to start with a quote from Brene Brown. It is, clear is kind, unclear is unkind. And I just think, to think about that for a minute is really important in terms of communication. It comes from a book called Dare to Lead, um, which she's just recently written and it's all about leadership and I think there's so much to learn from this book and bring into school, particularly about communication. And if we think about communication and how it impacts you on a daily basis within school, when people are clear, it's kind, you know what's going on. And when it's unclear, it's unkind because it starts us to spiral into some negative emotions. So why is communication so important? I think it's one of my biggest conversations that I'm having at the moment within my own environment because there is a lack of communication. I really believe there's not enough consideration for communication. Teachers work in isolation most of the day. You work in your music room or your classroom all day with the children. You might see other adults at lunchtime or in the break or recess but very rarely do you see them most of the day. So teaching can be quite isolated. We work in silos, we work in small departments we don't necessarily work together as a whole unit in the same place all the time. Maybe you only see your colleagues in all together once a month or once a week in a staff meeting. But there's no opportunity for growth or chat because it's here's the agenda and we're working through it. So teaching becomes very isolated. And although it's lovely being with children, we do need to be with the adults and we do need to know what's going on within the working environment. Not only the big picture stuff, like the school improvement plan, where the school's going, the school goals, how your department feeds into that, how your lessons feed into that, or the everyday running of a school, the behaviour concerns, student information, uh, policy changes, we need to know this information. You need to know this information. And I just believe that when schools get communication right, it really does reduce stress. Because what happens really is as soon as the communication starts to break down, that isolation kicks in and the loneliness and then the negative mindset. Why don't I know this stuff? Why am I hearing it fourth hand on the corridor? Why do children know more than me? Why are they telling me information that they've heard other teachers talking about? And it, it really does put you in a really negative place if you're not careful and adds to stress because unclear is unkind. It's easy to blame management, but we all have a responsibility in communicating from our own standpoint of what we're doing, sharing that with our colleagues, sharing that with our parents, sharing that with the students. But also from the top down as well, admin need to share the direction of the school and what they're doing as a leadership team so that you know what direction the school is in. And how you link in that, how do you play your part in the culture and our direction and of the goal of the schools? And without that clear information, without that clear understanding, this is where stress comes because you feel disconnected, you don't feel part of the vision, you don't know what the vision is and therefore it's hard to know which way to direct your department or your lessons or your own classroom practice and this adds to what is already a very stressful year. In terms of communication, I think this is the worst way of communicating and adding to teacher stress. It is the last minute dot com approach to everything, the crisis management, the reaction rather than the response. How often have you had a communication from somebody at four o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night where they have left whatever it is that they need from you to the last minute because of their disorganisation and they suddenly expect you to drop everything that you're doing and to respond and to put that at the top and that sometimes is impossible because we already have planned. Stephen Covey talks about this in his uh, book, Seven Steps of Highly Effective People. He talks about being in quadrant two, which is where you are managing your time and you're foreseeing, you're planning in the future. And, and, and that is really important as a teacher, not just to be thinking about today, but how your program fits in over the next like term and the year and how what's coming up, You know, where are those parents' evenings or the concerts, so that you're not reacting you are able to respond so you have time to deal with other issues that come up during the working week unfortunately there is a culture of this last minute.com everywhere and it's fed into schools and this really does add to your stress and 
it's their disorganisation that's adding to your stress. So you end up absorbing it all and you get an emotional reaction. You kind of react to it. It's like, do you not think I have 15 things to do before I do this? And, it, and it's being able to push back on that. And that's a really hard skill to do, particularly if you're a young teacher and a new teacher into the profession. So how can you improve communication so clear is kind and start to reduce your stress and start to move away from unclear is unkind. So action point one, it doesn't matter what level you are in your school, share, contribute, communicate. It doesn't matter what response you get back. You might get a reaction, you get might get an emotional response. You have to keep calm. If you have issues that you want some information or you wanna share, it's really important that you feel brave enough to do that, regardless of the response. Even after 25 years, I will send emails about their well-being, their academic progress. And sometimes you'll get res quite reactionary emotional responses, which is a reflection on, on that person and where they are at. And it is not a reflection on you. Communication is so important. We don't get it right all the time. We, we do it wrong at times. But trying to keep that communication with your colleagues, with your department, with your team leaders, with your admin, with your parents, with your students is really important because once you start these communications, you get this understanding, you get people buying into what you're doing, particularly as a music educator, trying to encourage people to take music lessons and be in band and do all the extra. So when communication breaks down, keep calm, take some time, use the 555 method. Is it important to respond? In five minutes, five hours, five days, take that time to take the emotion out of, of the response. People nowadays tend to just communicate by email, which means that you lose all that facial expression and non-verbal communication. So if you read an email and you're in a bad mood or you're tired, you'll read it in one mindset. You read it two days later when you're feeling really happy and your lesson's just gone really well and the children have made some amazing music and it, it's a totally different email because you feel differently. It's your response to it, how you react to it. Are you reacting from a negative standpoint or a positive standpoint? Are you responding? So when you get a communication breakdown, take a moment, just step away from it, think about it, and then respond factually. Take any emotion out of the situation and just respond factually. And that will take away the response coming back. Again, communicating in person is so much better than actually email, but it is the modern way. It seems to be coming more common within education uh, environment, even if you're in a room next to the person. And you're going to have to learn how to master that non-reactionary email because it will reduce your stress. I think the other way that communication gets broken down is when you have emails and certain people aren't copied into them. Again, I think if you work within a department, it's really good for the department to know. I think if you're talking to advisors, that's really important to know. Or if you're working with your line manager, that's important. So ensure that you copy the relevant people in because what happens, I'm sure you've experienced this, is an email has gone out or communication has gone out, you weren't copied into it, you hear it second or third hand on the corridor and you go, well, why didn't you tell me this? How, how am I meant to know if you don't share this information? Um, so we have to show that as a good practice, regardless of what else is going around, because this will reduce our stress. We're always looking and I'm always here to share ways that you can manage the teacher stress and reduce the teacher stress for your own well-being. You can't control others, but you can control how you react and how you respond. And again, I think this comes back in the tone of your emails. Be truthful, but be polite. Be honest about what you need but don't necessarily expect that you'll get the response that you were hoping for. You can only be honest, be present, be unemotional in those emails and in your communication with staff. For those last minute dot com colleagues, and they are everywhere, and they're everywhere in your life as well outside of school, and it's not any different in teaching than it is any other environment. You have to learn to put boundaries in place. It's okay to say no. It's okay to go back to them and say, thank you for your email. Thank you for asking for this. I have 15 other things to do first. So what is your final, final deadline? Because you'll find it's not the nine o'clock deadline that they've given you four minutes to do. They probably don't need it till two days later, but they're just doing it because they, they 
because they haven't got that management skill, that planning skill, that forward thinking, they are reacting. If they come back and go, no, I need it by nine o'clock, then feel free to either say, well, I can't do that, or, okay, I need cover so I can do it, or I need, and I know that's really controversial to say that you need cover, but, you know, at the end of the day, you can't be teaching and answering emails or putting together projects or data or whatever it is that you're being asked to do, lastminute.com, or you go, I have these 15 tasks, is there somebody else who can take some of these tasks on? You won't always win on these lastminute.com people, but the more that you are organized and proactive and communicating and also pushing back on those boundaries and say, I really appreciate you need this quickly, but I do have other things. So in the future, could you give me two, three days notice to get data together for you? You've got to kind of try and train them. You won't fix them all the time, but that expectation, that boundaries. And again, it's okay to say no, because what happens is you respond, you respond, you respond to all these lastminute.com requests and then what happens is your work gets pushed back pushed back pushed back and then suddenly you're working at nine o'clock every night and you're exhausted then you're then it's like frustration kicks in and you get frustrated at school at home everywhere and that's when your stress keeps building and that's really an unfair thing that your colleague has done but we have to learn how to manage that because Sadly, that's not going to change in this very fast-paced modern society that you and I are working in. I feel really passionate about communication because I know when it's good, everybody feels happy and positive because they know what they're working towards. And when it's not good and it's unclear, it causes emotions, negative emotions, a lack of connection, a, a, a lack of trust, a lack of being able to be vulnerable, lack of support, all of those things that adds to our teacher stress, particularly because we work so often in isolation during the day in our classrooms alone or in small silos. How can you start reducing your stress by really working on good communication? Clear is kind. I love that quote by Brene Brown. Really recommend Dare to Lead if you haven't read it. It's so useful and would have so many benefits in education. But you can demonstrate show examples of good communication and how you like to communicate so that other people start to learn from you and have those honest conversations and that hopefully will start to reduce your stress and make you feel that you belong more to the educational environment you're working in you can always model good communication but you can't expect others to do it so you just work on your own practice your own skills this will reduce your stress and actually help you navigate how to start dealing with others. It can be really hard working on communication, but it is an important skill. And you can only lead by example, but have no expectations that others will change. So that's a brief introduction on communication. Over the next few months, I'm gonna talk about different ways of learning to communicate, to improve communication, but also to dig deep into what communication is, those processes, those procedures that are often missed in school and what we need as educators and what you need within your department to reduce the daily and weekly stress within education. Uh, if you like this episode and you wanna hear more about communication, please like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and I will see you soon. I'm Rachel Hardman and this is Passionate About Music Education.